So obviously you are known for having guest stars and perhaps we'll, we'll soon hear some more guest stars on a, a future companion record to Africa Speaks. But on this particular album, you only had um, two collaborators, right? Um, That's two. all we needed, just Buika <laughs> and, and Laura Mbula. So let's, uh, Buika, you mentioned her. Let's yes. talk about um, her involvement in the record because uh, how did you discover her? As I said, Virgin Records is here no more, neither is Tower Records, so I go surfing in the middle of the night for African music. And she showed up at 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> I, I woke up my wife, Cindy, wake up, you got to listen to this. And so we got the CD, we drove to Napa, you know, over the weekend, and we listened to it. And so she, we got flooded with her spirit. And when we decided to do this uh, with Mr. Rick Rubin, uh, he asked me, he says, on Supernatural with Clive Davis, you had many singers, who do you want in this one? I said, only Buika and Laura and Bula, if that's possible. And, you know, I am so grateful. Y you need to know, and, and I mean this from an invitation, you need to know that whatever you call it, God or the universe, is constantly conspiring with angels and, and archangels to set in place people like Bill Graham or Clyde Davis or mm -hmm. Tito Puente or B.B. King to teach you and open doors for you. They're still there for you, like they are for me. So that's what I would say to the new artists. Trust that the universe is conspiring to give you abundance of uh, blessings and miracles. That's great. So tell me a little bit more about your collaborations with Buika, what she brought to the table. You know, it's, uh, we recorded half of 49 songs, and then we went to New Zealand and Australia for a tour. She came in to Shangri-La. I hadn't met her yet or shake her hands. We only called her, and she was gracious enough to, to come. She spent a whole week, and she, when I finally met her, she says, Maestro, she grabbed my hand. She goes, when I heard his music, I started singing melodies and writing lyrics I never done in my whole life. It was like, a, it was like being on a spell. It's just, it just compelled me. I said, welcome to the club. That's what happened to me, too, you know? Uh, <laughs> I must say that uh, every human needs a ritual, basketball player or whoever. Everybody has a ritual, you know, including the Pope. Uh, th th uh, thanks, uh, Christmas Eve, you know, with, with the wine and, uh, you know, because it's the blood of Christ and to atone for uh, the sins of, you know. But it's still voodoo, you know, ritual is ritual. And uh, <laughs> whether it's the blood of Christ or a goat or a chicken, I mean, voodoo is voodoo, all right? You know, uh, let's just be clear about that. Um, so what I learned is that the, the ritual that happened with this experience with Wicca and ourselves, uh, the word ritual is, an, uh, today we call it midi. You midi up from your, your, your phone to your laptop. You midi up your heart to the universe. Why? Because we want to be connected consciously again with absoluteness and totality. Things outside of our feeble, limited belief, you know? So what happened with Wika is that uh, she told me that, you know, she was um, compelled to do things that she, like in a trance, then, then we came back, and then she went back to uh, on her tour. We recorded the, the next batch of songs, and uh, then when she came back this time, we did uh, meet finally at, at Shangri-La, and we just, we just did the final touches here and there, certain songs. A lot of what you hear is the original guitar tracks, um, one take, and then she aligned with them, with the lyrics and everything, her voice and the singing, the phrasing. And there was very little, if anything, uh, maybe 5%, 10% to put the frosting on the cake kind of thing. 